Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're all doing really well. I just put Benjamin down for a nap, so I thought it would be really fun to come out here and make a bouquet to take inside. We're nearing the end of the week, and I always like to start the weekend with fresh flowers inside because it's time when we're actually inside more. It's so hot right now that, um, you know, on the weekends, I don't do a ton of work out in the garden. I do my watering and just some like regular maintenance stuff, but I don't do any huge projects. So I love to have fresh flowers inside because I actually have time to enjoy them a little bit. So I just thought I would bring you guys along for the whole project today. I was noticing that the lively lavender dahlias right in front of the chicken coop are looking especially pretty. So I think this bouquet is going to kind of be on the pink side of things. The last couple I've made have been more fall and late summer tones like peach and rust colors and which I love um, but I think we'll stick with pinks and purples this time. So I have a few of my supplies gathered. Let me show you. I normally make my bouquets right here at this concrete table by our back kitchen door because it's handy to be close to the kitchen in case I need any other supplies, but it's also usually in the shade, so it's very pleasant. Um, I've already got my water here. This is clean water that I added floral preservative to a couple of hours ago, actually. So it's been in there, it's all dissolved. And this is the floral preservative right here. It's just the little packets that come with grocery store flowers. I buy so many flowers in the wintertime that I usually end up with a huge stack of those. Um, I've got my snips and typically I like to use snips more than my pruners for flower arrangements because they're just much more fine on the ends um, and I feel like I can maneuver them a little bit better. And then this is the vase I chose for today's bouquet. This is an old soup tureen that my mother-in-law gifted to me, uh, but it did not have a lid anymore. So I use it as a vase and I love it. I love that it's footed, I like the handles, and I like that it's low. There's some beautiful William Shakespeare roses. Aren't those pretty? I love them. And then I always have a bucket of water right here. I did clean the bucket. It's kind of stained, so it looks dirty, but it's actually not dirty. Um, but I put fresh water in there to go gather all of my flowers. I just pop them in this water and then bring them back here to start in. The most important thing is to start with everything really clean. So I did wash my snips. I made sure that the terrain was cleaned out and all of my buckets and I have fresh clean water um, to start with because the cleaner all your stuff is, the longer your flowers will actually last. So I don't know how exactly this is gonna go. I'm gonna go toward the chicken coop first and pick some dahlias. And it's kind of amazing. You don't need that many of each type of flower um, to make a really beautiful arrangement. Like you maybe need five or six stems of dahlia, or maybe even less than that if you've got a smaller vase. So let's start with the dahlias here. Oh, and maybe some gara. That's pretty pink gara there. Hey girls, how's it going out here today? You guys have any eggs for me yet? Oh, here are the dahlias, but let's run in and see if there's any eggs. Hello. Hey girlies. We've got a couple. I'll come back for these a little bit later. So they're about to be in the sun, but aren't they beautiful? They've just filled in this spot beautifully. And next up are just a couple of these Invincible Mini Mauvette Blooms, which we just planted back here. I don't want to take too much from this one, so maybe just two or three stems. So next, I'm gonna actually cut a few grapevines, maybe one or two little bunches to hang over the side of our vase. But mainly, I would love to have a few of these branches to come out of the sides and kind of trail over the sides of the container. These cherry brandy rudbeckias are looking really pretty as well. Do you guys remember when I started these from seed inside? I think like the older blooms may look a little bit better with the pink tones, but this will bring a little bit of depth to the arrangement, I think. Look at that. I could watch that all day. I think I'm gonna also go with a little Stand By Me Clematis because I love the structure of the blooms. I think these look really dainty. This variety of uh, bush clematis has not stopped blooming all season long. It's been in color the entire time. And while I was over here, I went ahead and grabbed a couple of branches from this Pagoda Dogwood. It's got these beautiful berries and the nice green leaves. And my bucket is quite full, so I think I'm gonna have to go unload and maybe even start in on this arrangement and then go gather some more things. I grabbed a fresh bucket real quick because I do know I wanna use some of this Maestro Sedum. It's got kind of a nice light pink look to it. And then I'm gonna go grab some roses and Japanese anemones. I've got everything up here now and I did stop and get a couple of these gorgeous Boscobel roses and a stem of clematis 
and some maestro sedum. It does look like the grapevines aren't wanting to hold, and you know, that kind of makes sense. It's best if you're gonna make cut arrangements to go cut your flowers early in the morning, in the cool of the morning, and we are right smack in the middle of the hot afternoon. So a few of these things I was kind of like, oh, we'll see if they hold. If they don't, I won't use them in the arrangement. So grapevines might be out, but it looks like everything else is doing okay. Um, and sometimes you just have to do things when you have time to do it. And the last thing I wanted to mention is what I'm using as a frog in the vase to help hold the stems in place. And this is just chicken wire, really simple. I always have a roll of it out in the barn. Um, so I can cut a little square off, and what I'll do is just kind of crinkle it up and put it inside the vase, and this works just really well. Okay, so now I'm just gonna set the camera up, and I'm gonna start working on this arrangement. And you'll notice, like, I usually start with my bottom layers first, kind of like the weight of the arrangement, so I usually do bigger branches, um, and then I start using, like, the bigger blooms and placing those, and last is kind of the fluff stuff, so any vines that I have or anything that I wanna kind of have stick higher up out of the arrangement. I have no scientific process. I barely know what I'm doing here. It's just really fun and usually I end up liking the result. So here we go. And while I'm making this arrangement, I'm going to watch the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. And this is what the chicken wire frog looks like inside the vase. So I think that turned out really pretty. So I started with the chicken wire frog in the vase and then put fresh water in there. And then the first thing I placed were the grapes because it's kind of like the bottom most layer. And I just love the drama and the interest that those add. I love to have stuff just draped over the side like that. And then I created a framework for the arrangement using the pagoda dogwood branches with these beautiful clusters of blueberries. So there's one branch that I had come out a little bit further on this side and then one that came up right here so I could um, like drape my clematis vine. So it kind of creates this kind of structure. And then a short one right here with another cluster of berries. And then there's one in the back just to kind of hold up the rest of the arrangement. So after that was done, I started with the hydrangea blooms. And I just love the color of this one. It's like rusty reds and it's just obviously more of an aged color. And this is more of a fresh bloom right there. But I think it like ties everything together, especially with the cherry brandy rudbeckia, which I'm especially proud of because I started those from seed and I'm always proud of this stuff that actually like flowers or fruits or whatever. And then the lively lavender dahlias, which I absolutely love. This one right here had kind of a crooked stem, which was perfect. So it kind of drapes over the side. And then I tucked that one in just kind of flat so you could see the whole thing. And this one rises above a little bit, you can see. Um, and then I originally, right when I had this arrangement done, I had this rose tucked in back in here and this dahlia was over here. And I just swapped the two of them because I do think that having that light pink over here was helpful. It was, everything was too dark right here. So I did swap those. Um, what else is in here? Oh, the uh, Stand By Me Clematis. Isn't that the most sweet thing? Like they're the cutest little filler flowers. And then Japanese anemones, which I absolutely love. They have hugely long stems and their buds are really cool too. So you can see what their buds look like and that adds a really neat texture too. And the very last thing were the sedum bunches, which you can see tucked in right here. And that's just to add a little bit of filler. The only other place I really used them was in the back. Now this is going in a place where you really won't see the back of the arrangement. So I didn't want to waste any of the good flowers back here. Not that the sedum flowers aren't good, but you know what I mean. So if anybody catches sight of this kind of like from the side, they'll still see that there's some interest back there but most of it is facing like toward the sides and the front. And I do have to say that I'm kind of proud of myself for how I planned in terms of how many branches I cut. I was left with three stems of sedum, which is not bad. And I really should have known better because these are so bulky that you really don't need very many of them for a bouquet. You know, usually three is sufficient. I am not sure why I picked six. Um, and these are all just leaves and extra stems that like didn't have flowers on them and stuff. 
So that's my little garbage pail right there. So that's basically it for today's project other than placing it inside i've got the perfect spot it's in one of our front rooms where i had our fern terrarium and it's still the fern terrarium is doing great but i just moved it to a different spot so i've got the perfect stand for this arrangement of flowers i think it's going to be really pretty and i got this done before benjamin woke up which is crazy usually i don't get stuff done that quick so i just thought you guys might enjoy seeing this it's a little bit different than some of our other videos but i love to do just these little bouquets out of the garden. It's amazing what you can put together from just what you've grown. And it really takes just a little bit of this and that. You don't need a massive amount of really anything to create something pretty like that. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope it was inspiring to you uh, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.